Okay, hello. This video is what I think about Nikola Tesla. I got a request by somebody a couple weeks ago. So I watched a uh, documentary about Nikola Tesla. Can't remember what the documentary is called. Um, but anyways, um, yeah. So Nikola Tesla was this dude who is this Croatian dude who uh, whose family came from Serbia. And I was in Serbia last summer, actually, and they have his, his, his face on one of their bills, their money bills. So he's a national hero for Serbia. But he's an immigrant to America. Um, he's this really smart dude who uh, <clears throat> was in, uh, worked with... Um, he, he invented the, um, the uh, DC volt, the alternating current. And I don't really know much about that kind of stuff. I'd like to later on, but the alternating current is where um, is where juice comes through something and then it stops, and then it comes in again to be able to to make uh, make it so that lots of energy can go across um, big cables a lot faster or something. But before then, um, the big guy for all of that electrical stuff was Thomas Edison. He invented the light bulb back in like 1898 or something like that. And obviously that was like the biggest invention ever. But he used a certain kind of current. Um, I guess it was the DC current or something, some other kind of current. And, um, and uh, Edison came to work for him. And uh, when he saw Edison or... Tesla came to work for him, and when Edison saw Tesla's idea, he was like freaked out, and I guess kind of saw him as competition, and didn't want to pay him money, a certain like a large amount of money that he was going to pay him for developing like a, improving the light bulb or something, which he did for him, but then he didn't pay him, and he's like, "What?" And he's like, "Yeah, that's how we do it in America." So then he went broke, and he had to like dig ditches in New York for a couple years. But then he got some investors. He, he was a really famous inventor in those days. And so he made friends with uh, Mark Twain and um, all of those uh, robber barons, those really, really rich uh, industrialists. He made friends with uh, like J.P. Morgan and uh, Carnegie and um, um, yeah, some of those other dudes and got them to give him a bunch of money to um, to make his inventions, because but he claimed that he could make uh, free energy that could be transmitted wirelessly through the air, and um, and uh, I think the story goes is that he showed like Carnegie or one of those dudes, J.P. Morgan, his design. And he's like, and he said, yeah, look, it's free energy. And, but then J.P. Morgan didn't see how he's like, yeah, but how do you put the meter on it to charge? And he was like, oh no, free energy. Yeah. So give me the money to develop it and then we'll have free energy for everybody. And he was like, what? That's stupid. Like nobody's going to make money off of that. So, or I can't make money off of that. So he didn't, uh, he didn't give him the money apparently as the story goes. And then at one point, um, uh, Tesla went to uh, uh, Colorado Springs and invented his Tesla coil, uh, which is this thing <sighs> that you plug up into the electricity bin and it takes the electricity and it coils the electricity around and then goes up to this big like torus shaped glass bubble that then shoots um, lightning bolts out of it. And there's, I think there's pictures of him standing next to it with all these huge lightning bolts going everywhere. And that Tesla coil was supposed to be the transmitter of electrical energy. That was back in the days before we had electrical, um, cell phones. And, um, you know, now we know we have, we, we can transmit, um, information wirelessly talking to somebody on your cell phone and using the internet and large amounts of information, you know, upload and download huge files in just a few seconds. 
But uh, he was, and you know, that's before we even knew what that was. And maybe we got the idea from him to do that. But he was saying that we could actually transmit energy, electrical energy through the wires, wirelessly through the air. Um, and uh, yeah, but I guess people thought he was crazy and thought that was impossible. But supposedly, or I guess what happened was the government did go in and destroy his Tesla coil. So if, if it if it couldn't do that, why would they want to destroy his Tesla coil? And if he could do that, then then it just shows that it's proof that it worked, and they they destroyed it so that they couldn't uh, so that he couldn't give free energy to everybody. But <sighs> legend has it that his ideas, his papers, turned into the Harp Project, which we have going in the north in Alaska. When he died, supposedly the government came in and confiscated all of his papers, and um, and uh, nobody's seen them since. And so that people have been mulling over them and trying to figure out how to use uh, free energy from that. The Harp Project is this thing that uh, we all know exists because, well, lots of people have filmed it um, and shown satellite images of it. And uh, there's this one dude called like Ed Begley or something who was the son of a Alaskan congressman who cr- mysteriously died in a plane crash who was uh, investigating Harp up there, and now he's investigating it. And but Jesse Ventura in his conspiracy theory television show actually went there, and so they filmed it. They filmed all of the towers and stuff, and then he got to the door, and there was some soldier there like you can't come any farther. And he's like, but why? We can't come any farther. What is this? Oh, I can't tell you. But, you know, so it's hard. But they won't tell you what it is. And so the idea is that it's this, uh, it's this uh, weather warfare device. And it's way up there. It's way up there in Alaska because it's where the northern lights are. And the northern lights are... The way that the Earth is is uh, has this uh, the um, the magnetic field of the Earth, the Earth spins around, and this magnetic field shoots out of the North Pole and goes like way out into space. Like if the Earth is as big as my fingernail, the the magnetic field is like that. It's like huge, and it goes way up like this big torus, and it circulates. And that's why uh, our compasses can find the north, because the compass goes towards where the, the stream is shooting out of, and it goes, points that way. And the North Pole is somewhere in Alaska. The North Pole is not at the geographic North Pole. It's at the, uh, it, it's, it's like, like near Anchorage, you know? So maybe the North Pole is actually damn straight near that place uh, where, uh, where Harp is. And uh, the reason that it's not in the North Pole, in the geographic North Pole, is the way that our uh, magnetic field works is, <sighs> is the world spins around. And because of the moment, the, the, the motion that it does spinning around, it creates the magnetic field because the whole inside of the Earth is a big chunk of iron. And iron is what uh, we uh, use to make magnets from. Iron and like magnetic filings or something. But, but magnet, you know, connects itself to iron and stuff. But if you spin it around, you create the, uh, the electric field. That's why, that's why generators and cars, your alternator and stuff, has all of those copper wires that are, that are spun around like that. And then the thing spins around. Because it's spinning around creates the current. So it's the same thing with the Earth. The Earth spinning around creates a magnetic current. And actually, a lot of people think that if the Earth were to stop rotating, gravity would disappear and we'd all fly up into space. Well, obviously, you wouldn't fly into space because the Earth wouldn't be rotating, but if you push your foot up, you could fly up into space. Um, I don't believe that, but... Um, so, the magnetic is... But maybe the magnetic... Um, all the uh, the iron core and all the metal magna and stuff inside the Earth... It's a little bit lopsided, so the Earth is spinning around, and it's and so the um, the uh, the magnetic charge comes out of the Earth from the middle of where it spins, and the middle of where it spins in the middle, 
It's just, you know, there's like lots of volcanoes that shoot off to the side. So then it comes out, but not completely from the top, a little bit from the top. But the magnetic field, the, the, true, the magnetic north is changing. It's moving north. Uh, and it's been moving north at a very quick rate. I think it was kind of staying steady for a while when they first found it. And all of a sudden it started moving north. Dun, 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 dun. And some people think when it hits the North Pole, the, ge the, the geographic North Pole, that's going to be a pole shift. And then, the, and then you know, all this stuff, it's not going to be going that way, but it's going to be going like, like that. And North Pole is going to be in the South. And it's going to cause like the whole weather pattern from how the weather goes is going to be different because, because our weather pattern from the Earth follows the dictates of, of the, um, the magnetic um, turbulence of the earth. It's all related. So yeah, that'll be interesting. But anyways, uh, yeah, so that's where those, uh, those Northern lights are. It's those magnetic <sighs> lines shooting out of the earth and then the sun flies through and you can see it from that angle and you're seeing it and you're seeing it dance around. I want to see the Northern lights. That'd be awesome. But so harp is, they, they put like, thousands of these antenna and I don't know how many acres, like hundreds of acres or something. It's a very expensive project and it takes up a whole lot of area and uses <laughs> a whole lot of energy, of Alaska's energy. And one of the reasons they like to put it in the place that they put it is because it's right next to the Alaska pipelines. They, uh, there's lots of oil that they're digging up from Alaska and I think they even have a pipeline that goes from Alaska all the way to America. And, um, and yeah, so they build it next to the Osco pipeline so they can make, they can create power generators that, that run off of the oil that can then power HARP because that's how much energy it takes. And so HARP is, um, is some kind of weather warfare where they can, um, they can, uh, they can, and supposedly, like, you know, in the Tesla documentary, they interviewed some people who work with HARP, and they were, they were confirming, the scientists, that, yes, you indeed can, dis you can take out a plane from anywhere in the world. You just, for some reason, maybe, you, I don't know how they do it, but they mathematically, they, they plug in the charge to shoot off here, and then it just follows that mathematical line, or that, that magnetic line, which goes out and then goes throughout the whole Earth, follows that magnetic line, to intercept where the plane is and boom and they can pinpoint it to an area of like 100 feet by 100 feet or something where they just shoot way too way a lot of this of this energy and then it knocks out the electrical system of the plane and then the plane goes down because everything's electrical these days and so that you can take out the electrical system of of uh you know cities and stuff but also modify the weather like create um electrical storms that can cause power outages and cause even rainstorms and 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 um, disrupt the natural magnetic resonance of the Earth itself in that area. So you could and uh, and all of our brains work ma work on the magnetic resonance of the Earth. Our brain waves, when we're thinking very 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 consciously, the 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 smallest of our wavelengths is I think it can be as small as like seven um, hertz, seven um, centimeters, the distance between your two eyes, which overlap radio wave frequencies. So supposedly you could like, you could like knock people's brains out with harp. You could, you know, get in there and then coincide the brain wave with their brain wave and then make them go like, yeah, with harp. So it's that kind of warfare, all kinds of crazy ass warfare that they can do with that. And uh, yeah, so it's kind of freaky. And um, but supposedly Tesla was in New York and he was playing with one of his is like, say, mini, mini harp machines in New York. And because um, maybe I don't know, maybe you don't have to be like in the North Pole to do it, but he was creating these uh, resonant waves out of his machine, like somehow, won't, 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 and and it and he had it so that it resonated with the resonant wave of a building that was nearby, and he was making the building sway back and forth, and like it caused a whole lots of problems, like it bashed out a bunch of windows, and he almost knocked, he he like turned it off too late, 
then he almost destroyed the entire building. Um, and it's kind of like, um, I think this even happened once where there was this bridge. Oh yeah, there was this bridge that the British made. It was this pedestrian bridge that went across the Thames River. And um, it was like a really, really wide uh, bridge, you know, with no support beams in the middle. And people were walking around it and they didn't realize when they built the bridge that the bridge was could coincide with the steps of the amount of people who were walking through. So the people would walk across it and all the people's feet would go down at the same time. And the bridge um, coincided with that. Um, it empathized with that. And the bridge all of a sudden was going like, and people were like, whoa, hanging on to it. So they had to go and like redesign the bridge and, and, and fix it up and make it more sturdy. But uh, that kind of thing can happen with some kind of bridges. And I think a bridge even collapsed in America because of that, because cars drive through it and just out of some like random, the bridge starts doing this, you know. That's how rogue waves happen. In the world, at any given point, any given moment in the world, there's seven rogue waves. Right now, there's seven rogue waves somewhere in the world, and sometimes they hit boats. And uh, rogue waves are because there's these there's lots of different waves in the world, and you know from tidal tidal currents from the moon pulling the wave, and uh, and then the wind pushing them and stuff. And so you have, but and so you have like this wave that goes that's tidal, and then you have the other wave that's from the wind, and so waves clash, and that's why sometimes you have like really rough waters because there's lots of different currents coming together. But, um, but sometimes you have all these different waves and then they kind of meet up with each other. And then, and then they just, just mathematically, just out of, out of random, like kind of like winning the lottery. They all just meet up with each other until they have this huge ass wave. That's just like, you know, and, and, uh, so yeah, rogue waves. And then they can of course hit the, uh, hit the, hit the land. So not all tidal waves come from earthquakes. Some of them are just from random rogue waves. And so that's basically what his little resonator machine was doing. It was pumping out certain waves that are the same wavelengths as the earth wavelengths that already existed coming out of the earth itself, or he could figure out what the wavelength was of that building and he would resonate it with the wavelength and then just touch it to the wavelength and then crank it, the energy up a little bit and then have it resonate and kind of like a swing. When you're swinging a swing, you just pull it a little bit when you're coming back and then you get farther and then you push it and you get farther and then you're just like, whoa, and it gets bigger out of control. And so that's basically what he was doing once, you know, just turn it up a little bit, use the resonance and then use the momentum to turn it up some more. And so you don't really have to use that much energy. And maybe that's how they, how they, you know, how they use the heart machine to knock people's brains out and stuff. But maybe that's like the, that's the principle behind his free energy machine is he can just, you know, he can just set up his little uh, device, which takes a little bit of energy out of the, out of the uh, socket and then, and then uh, sets up a certain wavelength that powers a certain wavelength and then connects to the ether of the energy that already exists out in the, out, in, out from the cosmos and then just latches onto it and then oscillates it back and forth in the same size until it gets really big and then can shoot it out of its little, um, its little uh, toroid dome, zapped to another one. And then they can, they can uh, work off of each other and then, and then just shoot energy wirelessly and then you can, you can have free energy that way. And supposedly, People have been making free energy machines and that have powered cars. I saw this documentary and it looked like the documentary was made like in the 90s. Like it was shot with cassette. And um, this dude's driving around in an electric car. He's, he goes, yeah, look, did you, did you, this is my car. This is the future, dudes. In one year, we're all going to be having electric cars. See ya. You know, and the dude, the dude had just been just gotten out of jail. I guess he uh, he created an electric engine, a free energy engine, and um, and um, and all of a sudden, I guess he like sold it to somebody or something, or he made a few, and all of a sudden, 
the uh, the judge of California brought him up and said, oh, yeah, I was ordered by the government to throw you in jail. He's like, why? I don't know. I was just ordered you to do that. So he went to jail. But the weird thing about that video is that dude didn't dwell on that, on the whole details of going to jail. If I was that free energy dude, I wouldn't be so uh, nonchalant about that. I would have been, I would have said, yeah, this is the exact story. I would have made an entire documentary or at least like a video where I talk for 12 hours about all the details of, look, this is what happened. I made my machine. This is how I made my machine. You know, I designed how I made my machine and I'd be like, go ahead, you build it yourself. And then I go, yeah, I was doing this. I built it. Next thing I know, the judge calls me, you know, and this is the name of the judge and this is the date that he did it. And he said, I'm going to, they, these dudes, and these are the people who they are. And this is their number said that I should go to jail. And this, and this is the jail that I went to look it up. I was there. And these are the dates that I was there. And then they let me go and they didn't give me any, any due, due process or anything. What do you think about that? You know, I would have said that, but he was just kind of like, yeah, he, he, they threw me in jail and now I'm in my machine and we're all going to have an ear. So, but anyways, uh, this is like 20 years ago and we're not driving around in electric cars. So, uh, I think it's pretty much common knowledge to anybody that nobody, that people, anybody who's going to invest in a free energy machine, if it doesn't make them money, then they're not going to do it. And that people are, you know, the powers that be are always going to, um, fight against that. But I don't think that's going to be common knowledge for much longer. I think pretty soon people are just going to get fed up with it and they're going to be like, all right, enough of this bullshit. We need our free energy right now. Let's do it. Let's not give a fuck. And, and the people who in power are going to have that attitude. The people with money are going to be like, all right, I'm going to do what I can to, you know, I'm, I'm the king. I'm the, uh, the, the uh, ex chief executive of Exxon Mobil or whatever. And uh, yes, I am going to create free energy for people and not ask any money for it. You know, or of course they have to make money for this stuff, though. You have to make money for the um, the um, the uh, the maintenance of the machines. But you know, those people could make money off the patents. You could just license out the patent for the machine, and then anybody who uses it. I don't know how well that would work, though, because then if it's easy to make, people would just make it, and then I guess you could take them to jit to to court, though. And I think that's totally fair. Have those people who invent it to get the royalties off of it for a long ass time. Cause it's a lot better. It's a lot better than uh, not having free energy because not having free energy in oil is, is polluting and it just, it's more expensive. It could still be cheaper, but, uh, but anyways, yeah, if it was me, I would just be like, yeah, you can have it. It's all free. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But uh, there's some other free energy devices out there. There's, there's this thing called the Bloom Box that Seamus told me about. And it's this dude in Silicon Valley who invented this thing. He was originally a scientist for NASA and invented this free energy machine that uh, works off of, I guess, uh, oxygen. It creates oxygen and it eats, it eats what does it eat, like di uh, garbage or something. And uh, you feed it in there and it just like transmits it and creates energy and it's feeding the energy for Google. It powers all of Google and all these other Silicon companies out there. And he's, he predicts that in 10, five to 10 years, it's going to be in everybody's house and we're all going to have free energy. So, and I, um, so all we need, and we have, our batteries are strong enough to power stuff enough, you know? So I could see, you know, in a few years, my car, I just drive up to the gas station and I plug my car into the wall and it charges my battery. And, um, then I drive off and then I can drive 50 miles and plug it in again. And that thing's got a bloom box on it or a Tesla coil or whatever. But, um, it is, it is interesting how, what happened to Tesla though, because it does kind of, if you look at the story of Tesla, it is interesting. Um, his, um, his, how he got blacklisted because the guy, uh, I think a few years ago, the U.S. Patent Office or something uh, officially granted the um, the made him the official inventor of the radio because um, when this guy called Marconi, this Italian dude who had always been the dude who was officially recognized as the guy who invented radio. 
when he brought his patent over to look at the radio, it was obviously off of a patent, the same exact design from the patent that Tesla had uh, had filed like f- a few years beforehand. And uh, nobody did anything about it, and they let Marconi because they wanted to, they wanted to forget about Tesla. They they blackballed him, um, and they were making fun of him and stuff while he was still alive. And he died broke because nobody wanted to help him with his projects or hire him, even though they all knew how brilliant he was because he already did patent the radio and, and and improved the light bulb and invented DC energy. But they thought he was nuts because he said that there was this such thing as free energy. And uh, he also sent out energy, um, like uh, beams into the cosmos, and he got these other cosmos beams to come back. And he's like, "Oh, look, intelligent beams back!" And they're like, "What? Are the Martians communicating with you?" Ha <laughs> ha. He's like, "I don't know." And somebody on coast to coast claimed that he claimed that he was contacted by UFOs. I don't know. I don't know anything about that, but that's what that dude said. Um. But um, if and then, of course, they raid his stuff when he dies. And so and then they take his they take his his patent away from him. So and I'd never heard of Tesla. I would never I heard his name first in my entire life, like a couple of years ago. We, we always, you know, it was Thomas Edison was the big dude. And Tesla was like nobody. So and we, we I'd heard of Marconi, you know. And so, yeah, maybe that's like another reason why we should believe that there's free energy out there that's being suppressed. But, um, but, uh, it does make, I mean, there's some other, other stuff that shows how that kind of resonance, uh, machines do work. Um, you can look at, uh, in this documentary of Tesla, I saw, you should watch it. It's amazing. And I should have copied that part of the video and I, I should go back and do, but, um, it has this dude elevating a 75 pound cannonball and i saw it the cannonball he 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 trained his uh little laser beam things from his machine onto the cannonball and the cannonball is is floating it's going like this he created anti-gravity with the cannonball with this with the resonant waves like going into it and vibrating it up in its own vibration i guess what you do is you lock onto the natural vibration of the machine of the object you're trying to elevate and then you tune into it, and then you 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 turn up a, the wave of the wave that it's at, and then you turn it up a little bit more, and then you, you you raise it. But I saw it. I saw the thing floating. It's amazing. And um, and then of course uh, on cymatics experiments, I've seen stuff um, levitating. You know, they've levitated ping pong balls with sound waves, and then the ping pong balls spin around each other. They all connect to each other in threes, and then they spin around really fast. And then they like separated. They, and, and then, of course, with all the cymatics, with all the different, um, the different vibrations, pitches of the sound that they shoot out of those, of the, uh, the speaker that's directly below the little Petri dish of sand on top. Um, yeah, all these different co- configurations. At one note, it's four circles. And then another note, it's like eight of them. All of a sudden, it just choo, jumps to it. And then it jumps to another one, all these different configurations. It's it's amazing to look at. That'd be cool. I'd love to own my own little Cymatics machine. But So yeah, so if you can do that with sand, of course you can do it with anything. Just as you get better at it, you can do it with uh, levitating cannonballs. You can do it with creating anti-gravity. I mean, if you can do it with a, levit- cr- with a cr- cannonball, there's no reason I can imagine why you couldn't just put that machine inside the cannonball and have the cannonball levitate itself. And there there you go. There's a... Uh, there's a, a, a a flying saucer, a weightless machine, a plane. Then we can fly across the world levitating our little levitation machines. Just whoosh, fly across the sea, the ocean, nee, 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 nee. pushed along by a little propeller maybe or some other device or the resonance machine sucking, pulling her to the other place. But yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing when you see these proofs in the video. You should actually see it there. Um, and... Uh, um, yeah, so if you can do it with levitating machines, then you could do it with, you know, shutting off people's brains. Because we're all electrical beings. Our bodies are electrical machines. Turning off people's car, somebody's electrical car, you can turn off somebody's brain. 
And so that's probably why, like, I believe that the, that, that uh, free energy is out there. And that's probably why the government grabbed it and didn't want to release it. Because if you do release it, then you will find out how simple the, the, uh, the technology is. I think a lot of the times, a lot of, you know, in the past, when we look at re inventions and stuff, we, we realize how simple this stuff is. Um, how simple the concept is, like the dude who found out how the earth is round and how big it is. It's, it's a really simple experiment. You just walk 50 paces out, you you look at the angle of the mountain, you walk 50 places closer, look at the angle of the mountain, then you find how big the mountain is, you go to the top of the mountain, you look at the edge of the, edge of the horizon, and then you, you calculate how much far, lower the horizon is from where it would, it would be if it was flat, and you see how big the earth is. You know, but it took us forever to f figure that out. Well, all of the different, uh, all of the different inventions, you know, somebody invents it and you're like, well, duh. You know, we didn't have shoelaces until like the 1700s or underwear until like the 1800s or actually, I don't understand the point of underwear, but like what else? Like, you know, snowboards and skis and all kinds of stuff, you know. So as soon as we have the technology to create these free energy machines, we'll probably uh, people would see how easy it is and then anybody could make it. But if you have a free energy machine, you could you could easily turn that free energy machine with that same technology and um, into a weapon, you know, somebody could, some stupid high school kid could jimmy rig their, their car, the energy that powers their car into a laser beam weapon to kill, to go to school and kill the whole school. <laughs> Everybody's out, hee <laughs> hee, I'm fucking dirty dog, you know, that's probably how it is. So, so, you know, I bet you people who are, who are in control of it. I bet you there's government black ops people in control of it who've got all these other aliens around them who are like, yeah, who are like, it, who are like, yeah, man, eventually we're going to have to let this stuff out, but uh, let's just wait a little bit until uh, there's not as much hatred and not as much like crazy high school kids out there who are going to want to like sabotage. Because there's lots of people out here who want to sabotage and, and, and there's lots of, lots of people who, who support people who want to sabotage. You know, like I heard when 9-11 happened and um, and the building went down, all there's there were in a room full of Chinese dudes and all the Chinese people were like ho hooting and hollering and rooting it on, you know, and I, and I bet you a lot of people like in the Middle East maybe were doing that. And and, um, you know, there's there's like nihilistic people out there. Um I mean, I did a video, I did, I got a request to do a video about, I guess there's somebody named Anonymous and they're predicting that they're going to shut down Facebook. They're going to hack into Facebook and destroy Facebook because Facebook, uh, spies on us for the government and, and, uh, you may be mad at us later, but you'll be happy. You'll thank us later because we're only helping you because now you're, you're like crackheads. Everybody's addicted to Facebook and it's, and it's against uh, what human humanity is all about because now, now we're all just faceless drones behind Facebook. And, you know, we have a history of going against new, new inventions. You know, the Jacobites, they'd, they'd smash apart all of the, all of the um, you know, the uh, threshing machines and, the, you know, from the Industrial Revolution stuff because it put them out of work and it just made them feel uncomfortable and new. And same thing with Facebook, but same thing with, like, free energy. If we were to invent free energy... And fly all over the world, there'd be people like, oh no, the world is going to get invaded by all of these dirty, dirty Muslims from the Middle East. They're gonna fly, and all the Mexicans are gonna take over our country. And and uh, and, 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 and in 50 years, everybody's gonna be Mexican speaking Spanish, and our society, civilization is gonna completely crumble, and there's gonna be nothing left, and it's gonna be cannibals and dogs in the streets, and you know. And it's people do kind of have like a I think it's like a past life and like a subconscious connection to that idea because it, that kind of stuff has happened to some extent in the past, like with the Mongol invasions of the Middle East, burning all their books. And of course, we've done it or Spain has done it when they came over. Well, no, America, England too. Spain came over and burnt all the books of the Mayans. Americans, English came over and, you know, put smallpox in the and the blankets that they traded with the Indians and killed all the Indians. And then their civilization went to hell and disappeared. And, you know, Atlantis disappeared and stuff. So people might, yeah, are, are hooked up to that mindset, which I think is an actual wave, a mind wave that's out, out there in the spheres that people hook up into. And then they go, okay, yes, 
right. So basically we need to wait just a few more years until people can relax some, you know? Lay back, kick back, and just be like, all right, let it let it on me. I'm ready. I think we can do it, you know? And then and then there just won't be enough people, won't be that many people in the world anymore who are like, all right, how am I gonna how am I gonna be a hero to like kill everybody and then they'll thank me because I'm getting rid of you know? Like that movie um with uh Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, Source Code, I saw it. The bad guy in Source Code was some stupid college kid who wanted to, like, kill everybody with a nuclear bomb because he was going to, like, help society by showing them their destructiveness or something. And um, Yeah, but, th you know, there's people out there, and maybe we're just not ready for that um, because free energy, like I said, free energy machine is also um, a weapon. Can can probably quite easily be used as a weapon. Very powerful, very deadly weapon. So, you know, um, that, I mean, this is what I think we should do if I was going to put on my political hat is we should allow there to be free energy, you know, but then we need to um, maintain a pretty strong uh, law enforcement code within our country or maybe even keep the military going if we're going to let the, if we're going to turn on free energy, keep the military just to be able to catch all these like rogue saboteurs who want to use that free energy technology to shoot particle beam weapons at, at, at people and kill mass amounts of people and take them out. I don't know. It's just something to think about. Or just wait a few years until people are a little bit nicer. Um, but And then just, uh, just detach free energy. That's what I would do. Just my decision would be to... to uh, yeah, stop spending all that money, 20% of our budget on the government or on the military and then uh, invest in the free energy machines and then let everybody have the free energy machines, make it a, a, a company or a, a, a state-sponsored thing with all the free energy. And then, uh, you know, and then just like basically expect that there's going to be some psychopaths out there who are going to make weapons out of it and kill other people and then just basically try to go over them individually, but just trying to, you know, trying to work your way through it. and But but being trusting and ex ex assuming the best of other people and uh, and just, just moving forward and not being afraid and, and keeping it shut up. And because that's what gives people reasons to distrust other people is by being afraid. It's kind of like this perpetuating problem, you know. I don't trust you, so I'm not going to let you have the free energy you know, so then you're not going to trust me because you're going to find out that I don't trust you. And yeah, so we just need to just trust. And um, yeah, so yeah, the future is really interesting what's going to happen. And uh, if any, anybody knows how to design a free energy machine, that'd be cool to know. There's another kind of free energy machine. There's the, uh, the Bashar coil that Bashar the gray alien talks about. And I actually saw a model of it. And it didn't look like the model that I had in my mind. The model that I saw, it was kind of like a coil that went up, like if this is the bottom and this is the top, it was that kind of shape. But the, 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 the model I was thinking about was it, it's like an actual sphere. And the, and the thing goes up like this. It's actually in the same shape as, as the, uh, the tetrahedron inside of the Earth would be. It's the same exact shape because that's how the energy throughout the cosmos is shaped. It goes out in the cosmos and comes into the Earth through a tetrahedron on, you know, 19.5 degrees and then the bottom, the, um, the south pole, and then the one goes up north, 19.5 degrees south and the north pole. You, you make your coil that size because that's how the energy comes in. The energy comes in, goes in through the, uh, the end points and then spirals from the out in, out around. And, you know, maybe that's how the uh, energy through the, uh, the electromagnetic, the... Uh, magnetic field goes. But, uh, but yeah, according to Bashar, that, that little coil he was describing can um, tune in with the natural vibration of the energy that comes in from the sky, you know, in the, in the same uh, configuration of the, uh, the golden mean spiral, you know, where each, each time it coils out, it's, it's exactly twice as much as it was the time before that, twice as much as the time before that. That's how the planets in our solar system are configured. That's how um, shells look, flowers, pine cones, uh, our pineal gland and our brain, uh, the, the shape of our bodies, you know, like that Leonardo da Vinci thing where the dude has his hands out and then they put the pentagram over it. 
pentagram is uh, the pentagram. If you draw lines to the pentagram, that creates a golden mean spiral inside. You've seen, I'm sure you've seen it, the golden mean spiral inside of the pentagram. You know, the sh I mean, when we've always known about that, the pentagram is the shape of the of the Jewish symbol and uh, the, uh, the the pagans and and um, hurricanes are shaped like that. Galaxies are shaped like that. It's 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 how energy comes in from the cosmos. So if you create a, a little coil that is shaped in the same shape as that, you're creating a um, you're creating a um, a uh, what are they called those things um, a torsion field where that where the three dimensional object of that thing is sitting there and it's inhabiting the body of the energy the same exact shape of the energy that's already passing through so the energy that's passing through locks onto it and then if you if you if you plug that little coil up to the wall a little bit of juice a little bit of energy it collects the energy and then it, and then you just turn it up a little bit using the the sympathetic parasympathetic waves and it can crank up a little bit more crank up a little bit more and then it can actually overflow with energy and then you use your little you have that connected to the little tesla um tesla torus that can shoot energy out into the sky to the next tesla coil and then you can actually suck energy off of it and it can create more energy than it than it uh than it uh than it absorbs because if you think about it, the world itself creates more energy than it absorbs you know i mean we all absorb energy and it all we're all living in the world. We have all this energy. And where does it come from? It comes from the cosmos. It comes from the ether. The sunlight comes in and, and grows plants, uh, which die, and then they feed the earth. And so the oil, the earth basically bubbles up and grows with all the dead matter that keeps falling on the earth. And, you know, it just boils up. And the earth is growing on the outside, but also from the inside because the hyperdimensional uh, sun rays get into the middle of the earth and bubble up the earth from the inside and create oil, which pops out of the, which has, which is like, you know, um, crystallized sun energy, which we've been, which we, which we know can create lots of energy. And, um, and yeah, so we already are living in the principles of free energy and the shape of that principle, the free, of that free energy, the way that the, everything gets the energy is, as we can see by looking at nature, is in that uh, is in that golden mean spiral shape. So you just create a little copper tube out of it, and there you go. And so that's probably what you know, what te what Tesla was talking about. Tesla coil is probably shaped in the same shape as the Bashar coil. Bashar says they're little kids. They create little uh, free energy machines in school. The alien kids, the gray kids. And so um, that's one of their school projects. Is is just making their own little. It's like lab for them. So it's pretty easy to do. And um, you know, it's also what Al Bielik described. Al Bielik said the Philadelphia experiment was from Tesla technology, and he described what the coils looked like on um, on the HMS uh, Enterprise or whatever that thing was called. <laughs> um, well, there's the Montauk project on the ship of the Montauk, but you know, the Philadelphia experiment had these huge coils um, that were shaped like pine cones, apparently. That they would uh, they bring a bunch of batteries on the ship, you know, with their independent power. And then, and then shoot energy into these coils, which were, sh which were placed in a certain configuration on the ship to each other. And they would start glowing. And next thing you know, bonk, they were in another dimension. And so, uh, yeah, there's definitely something to coils. Coils uh, can collect energy and take a charge. Um, you know, and you don't have to have it like spinning around like a gyrator on a like, like your, your alternator in your car or the earth spinning around. It can actually be something that, or maybe it does spin around because I know that um, spaceships, their little um, anti-gravity creator is from uh, element 118, which is an, an artificially created element, um, which is, you know, super heavy. And they put it in a liquid, a liquid solution and they, and they throw it into a torus and then they, they, they shoot an electric charge to it to make it, to make it flow around um, spin around inside the torus at like a crazy, crazy fast speed, which creates this like, um, this hyperdimensional like field around the ship, which can make it like, uh, I guess not have like anti-gravity and stuff. So, uh, yeah, anyways, um, 
Hopefully, uh, whoever has his Tesla papers should put him up on like black. What's that website called? Black website and black box, black ops or whatever. That little kid who put it together. Straight up, we should uh, read that and, and start making those things. Um, and I, there is somebody. Somebody uh, alerted me to a forum where people created a forum um, based talking about the Bashar coil. And maybe they talk about the Tesla, Tesla coil too. So I'm sure there's forums where people talk about this. And if I think about it, I'll put the, uh, I'll put the link of it. Cause somebody invited me to that forum. I should, I should comment on the forum and like, be like, Hey, you guys, has anybody tried about make, tried, thought about making, making the, uh, free energy coil, you know, the same exact shape as a tetrahedron and not like a cone like this. But, uh, yeah, I'd like to know how they, how, if anybody's having luck with that, but if I, if I ever made a free energy machine, I would, you know, I'd put it out there. I'd sell it on the street put it in my car and I'd, sh I'd share, I'd make YouTube videos about it. I mean, if so many people would make fucking, uh, free energy machines, it's like, where's the free YouTube video? The dude like, Hey, look me and my free energy machine. You know, why doesn't he have like a YouTube channel where he uploads a video every couple days? You know, here's me driving to the store. Here's me explaining to what it is. Here's me giving my little seminar. Here's me selling it, you know, buy buy my free energy car. How come, how come none of that's happening from the ground up? You know? Maybe it's not happening because all the people who invent those free energy stuff, they only do it to make money and they only want to, so they will go through lawyers and they go through big companies and then the big company goes, ah, okay, well, here's some money, get lost, you know, or something. I don't know, but it's weird. Like, um, yeah, I'm, con I'm confused as to how, if it does exist, how it's under wraps and maybe it doesn't exist. Maybe it's all a sham, but, uh, I do think that free energy exists. So in some level, so, uh, yeah. Anyways, that's what I think about Tesla.